Good evening, everyone. I'm your host, Nighthawk, and we're here today to do a uh, tutorial on the energy advanced energy storage units that are a part of the Greg's Tech mod that is a part of the Feed the Beast mod pack. So I uh, thought we'd go over the adjustable energy storage unit, the interdimensional energy storage unit, and the lapatronic energy storage unit that are all make up part of the Greg's Tech mod. And I'm out here just in the desert in my tutorial world where I thought it would be a great place to set up a basic uh, solar array using these uh, ultimate hybrid solar panels. Uh, these are basically HV solar panels that have a built-in uh, energy storage unit that holds up to 1 million EU just built into it. And so we got... Uh, just thought I'd lay out a nice little array of them. I might do that uh, array a little differently if I was building up a bigger array, but we'll wire all of these up and connect them to one of these adjustable energy storage units. Now this one here is really nice. It will take in up to uh, packets that are up to 2048 EU, so you can uh, bring in very high voltage power into it and it will store up to 100 million EU total. Now the great part about the uh, adjustable energy storage units is you can change how much power they are actually putting out. So by we can adjust it down where they won't output anything. We can make it where they only output a small amount. So like if we wanted to power our low voltage devices, we could make it so they only send out 32 EU per tick or per packet, rather. Uh, well, technically it's also per tick, but uh, the packet size will also only be 32 EU, so those low-voltage devices won't get uh, vaporized or explode when they're hooked up to this uh, adjustable array. And then we can also go to the other extreme end of this range and pump it up all the way to 2,000 EU per tick, and in order to do that, we uh, to make use of power that output that high, we need to use these four uh, four insulated HV cables. So we're going to run a couple of these over. So you could uh, have basically you can use these adjustable energy storage units uh, pretty much anywhere, and leave out all of your transformers. Uh, it basically has its own built-in transformer, so you don't have to worry about what your outputs are. Um, so since we set the output level up to 2000 EU per tick, we're going to use this HV cable and then we're going to put in the next one that we're going to look at which is the interdimensional storage unit. Now this is a really cool one. Uh, this one holds up to 1 billion EU, but what makes this one really special is that I don't have to, uh, you know, I can run cables into it and uh, power it anywhere. And then I can uh, say, find, uh, you know, leave this nice little solar array out in the middle of a desert, you know, powering the, the uh, loading power into this uh, interdimensional storage unit. I could even have it hooked up directly to the uh, solar array if I chose to. Um, you can have multiple plugged in. Uh, I don't. Kn I think there's a limit to how many that you can have. Really, the limit is irrelevant because they're really expensive to make. They actually take four of the adjustable storage units to make each one of these, plus some other things as well. Um, I would show you the recipes, but uh, that seems to be crashing the game right now. Um, hopefully, they will have that fixed soon. So anyway, I'm going to go over here to th this other waypoint that I have marked, and we're going to make use of the interdimensional storage units in this really nice little valley. So you might want to have your power production. You know, maybe you're using uh, geothermal energy and want to have it close to uh, you know, underground by a volcano or a lava source or something like that, and need to get your energy back out to your house and uh, maybe you have this really nice scenic valley area that you chose to build your house in. So we just uh, set down one of these interdimensional uh, arrays and you can see that uh, it's still gaining power from the solar array 
And in this case, we're going to take an HV cable off of there and hook it up to a adjustable storage unit. And we're going to lower the power down here because what we're going to do next requires a little bit more, uh, a little bit lower power input going into it. So one of the other, the uh, last storage unit that we're going to look at is the uh, Lapitronic Energy Storage Unit, and this one is kind of a unique one. Um, I'm going to get a little bit of dirt here so that I can level out this area just a little bit. Actually, yeah, I want that to start that way. So this one is a little bit special. So when we place this uh, particular block, and we're going to place it so that it faces this way, I think, um, you can see that this Oh, let's see if we get... So, right now, there's not any GUI to it at all. So, this doesn't actually... This particular, the uh, Laptronic Energy Storage Unit, doesn't really do much on its own. What it takes is these LESU blocks, and these are Lapitron Energy Storage Unit blocks. And the great part about these is you can have these connected in any way that you want, as long as they eventually connect back uh, into one unit, back to the your uh, the main block, then they contribute to the energy storage that that block that the uh, that energy array can uh, contain, and they also change how much energy that it can take in, and how much energy it will actually output. Now, all of the energy input and output is done at the, the uh, first block, the Lapitronic Energy Storage Unit block. So you have to plan around that a little bit. But uh, we can plug a cable in here. Now, since we're only putting out 32 EU, tick, uh, EU per tick from our adjustable array, we're able to handle that uh, going in there. And you can see our interdimensional array is still gaining huge amounts of power and we're able to put some power into this array. Now the cool thing is because you can place these in any form that you like you could use this as a building block and build your entire house out of these as long as you uh, actually let's change how I build this as long as you leave room for your connector block that uh, where you wire things to uh, put your wires in and out of it and you actually only need to have one side for input and I believe that uh, this other side right here is your output. Now the great thing is the more of these Lapitron Energy Storage blocks, the LESU blocks that you put in, the more power that you can store total and the more power output that it will allow. And once you also place certain numbers of them, it also changes how much power it can take in at once as well. So we're going to keep building here. Uh, and just kind of build a basic little uh, structure. So let's say you wanted to build your entire house or maybe a secret lab or something out of these blocks. Do so, just build a... Uh, all you want out of these. Build like crazy here. Don't want that one. Uh, can't forget to have a doorway. Can fly up here. I keep placing these in weird places, but that's okay. Now, obviously, if you were uh, not in creative mode, then uh, you'd want to be a little bit more careful with your placements, just so that you don't uh, potentially waste these. I think that you can break them with uh, pickaxe or similar without actually breaking the block, but uh, you'd want to be a little bit careful, and we'll try doing that here in just a minute. As soon as I finish building this quick little structure, and basically I'm just going to put a quick roof on this and we're going to call it done. And then we'll see just how many blocks that we used in building this. 
Now if we come back out here, where did I, what did I do? I seem to have got myself stuck. There we go. So now you can see we can store 111 million EU, and now we can actually put more EU per tick into the uh, array, and it actually will output more as well. So let's go ahead and bump the output here up to 128. Just so we can charge this a little bit faster. I would uh, use the larger increase, but I don't want to accidentally overshoot my target because uh, just like many other things, bad things happen. So now you can see that's charging faster and Wow, and I am lagging like crazy all of a sudden. So, the more blocks that you place, the more that you get more energy that you can now uh, accept into it, and the more energy that it will actually put out. So, I hope you've enjoyed this tutorial, and just as one quick demonstration as to... Uh, actually, we'll do one other thing first. Let's get a tool, grab a diamond pickaxe. Uh, let's see if... we'll take a quick look to see if we can recover these without uh, oops, uh, without breaking them using a pickaxe. Apparently, everything I do is just lagging like crazy today. So yeah, if you use a pickaxe, you will recover your blocks, but it still takes a while to uh, recover those, so you don't really want to spend a lot of time putting blocks in the wrong place. And as a word of warning, make sure to check how much power that your uh, structure can accept because if you don't and you do something like that well you just made an expensive mess and with that i hope you guys enjoyed this episode uh this tutorial and please take a moment to like and subscribe i greatly appreciate the support and have a great day bye